Hey everybody, hope you're all having a good day today. You're about to watch my performance from Smoking Skulls Motorcycle Club in Paragold from May 13th. Uh, that show was the first showcase I was ever booked for, uh, and I think it's the best performance I've ever done as well. So, um, hope you enjoy it. Let me know down in the comment section what you think. There are no added laugh tracks at most as far as audio is concerned, just like always. I will probably run it through some filters in GarageBand. Other than that, Nothing's going to be changed about the audio. If it wasn't heard there, you won't hear it on the video. So, um, enjoy the show! Yo, give it up for Bryce Mark! Yeah! <laughs> Good evening, Paragol! Oh my goodness! It's in the way. How are we doing tonight? Woo! Doing good? That's what I like to hear. Happy anniversary, Smoking Skulls! Yeah! Yeah! That's right, that's right. All right. I have a question for you while I got you all here. Why is it that every time there's any sort of a natural disaster anywhere in the South, like say a tornado, the media always feels the need to go and find the most country hick redneck person they can possibly find to go on TV and talk about it? You know, I mean, we have reasonably intelligent people down here. There's one right there. He's reasonably intelligent, but they exist down here. I don't see why we have to go and find Yosemite Sam every time a tornado hits the place. Every time I turn on the news after a storm like that, this is what I see. We come to you live from Goobertown, Arkansas with local resident Cletus Bodine, who claims he saw everything. Mr. Bodine, will you please tell us what you saw? <laughs> well, yes, sir. I certainly will. I was just sitting out on the front porch when all of a sudden a bunch of clouds done flowed together in the sky and formed like one great big old single cloud and it got real real dark, kind of like it is back in the corners back there, about that dark. <coughs> yeah. And uh, around about that time, at the top of the center, it started circulatory and she's going like that. And it started coming on down towards the ground and I leaned forward in my rocking chair. It's the nicest little rocking chair, by the way. Sit low down right there on the front of the seat so you can sit there and show off your family jewels. <laughs> anyway, uh, it, it started circulatory and it's coming on down towards the ground and it hit the ground, started kicking up dust and cows was flying, sucked my dog out of the backyard, floated it around everywhere. I said, I knew right then it must be a tornado. So I said, what any good red blooded American man would do? I run inside and grabbed my 12 gauge. Come back out and I said, get on there, Twisty Misty, and I shot it. And wouldn't you know it? That buckshot done float down there, hit that tornado with the ground, coming back toward me, went through my window and took out my TV. <laughs> now I'm suing the National Weather Service for 20 million. <laughs> That's a word where I'm from, y'all. Million. M-I-Y-I-N, million. It's actually a homonym. It's a word that's got two meanings, you know, same word, two meanings. There's the numerical million, like 20 million dollars. And then there's the other version, meaning one and one's, one's friend. To use in the sentence would be like this. Hey, he's coming with me and you. <laughs> uh, I'd like to tell you a story. This is a true story. Uh, and uh, I want to dedicate this to my mom. Happy Mother's Day. It's her favorite story. Uh, yeah, this is a true story that goes like this. Right after I turned 18, I went out to eat in a pizza restaurant in Little Rock, right? <laughs> and uh, I was with my brother Morgan, my mom, and my cousin Tammy. Okay, so we go in and we get a table, and uh, they come by and they take our drink orders, and then Morgan gets up and goes to the bathroom. Just for reference, the bathroom is all the way in the opposite corner of the pizza restaurant. That will come into play later. <laughs> okay? Now, Morgan has been known to take a relatively long time in the bathroom. In fact, he has taken food in there before. You know those little frozen personal pizzas you can get? Yeah. You know, you, you know those? Pull it out of the oven, stick it on a plate, cut it, and go poop with it. I have watched him do it countless times. Well, the drinks get brought out to us. Morgan's still in the bathroom. He doesn't have a phone, so we have no contact with him. It's just radio silence across his pizza restaurant. And then uh, they take our food order, we order pizza. No, no word from Morgan, he doesn't come back. The pizza gets put on the table, brought out to us. No word from Morgan, we don't know where he is, we don't know what's going on. And my mom looks at me and says, you need to go check on him. Me? Why do I have to go check on him? She goes, well he's your brother. Well he's your son. 
<laughs> she said, he's in the men's bathroom. I can't go in there. Because this is back when we still paid attention to the little sign that was on the door. You remember those? Yeah. <laughs> this was back then. So I said, fine, I'll go check on him. And so I go walking across and I get to the bathroom. There's one stall in there and I knocked on it. Just... I said, Morgan, it's Bryce, you all right? No. Well, what's wrong? He goes, I've got diarrhea. Hold on. And I went back to base to report what I had learned. <laughs> My mom goes, what'd you do then? I said, this. This is what I did. And Tammy's sitting there going, you're 18. You're supposed to be assessing the situation, coming up with solutions. I said, hey, 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 I'm a rookie. Don't be putting me in the end zone. Okay? You're going to have to sub me out at about the 20-yard line. All right? If you don't, if you don't, I'm going to fumble. That's going to create a mess. And given the circumstances, I'd say that's really going to stink. <laughs> sub me out, put in a two- to three-year veteran. That's the smart move. <laughs> now, my mom goes, well, well, how bad is it? And I said, well, I mean, last time I had diarrhea, it certainly wasn't good. I'm assuming it's roughly the same thing right about now. She said, you didn't ask him how bad it was? I said, no, it's assumptions. I assumed it was bad. She said, well, go ask him how bad it is. I said, all right, fine. I go back across the pizza restaurant to the bathroom, knock on the stall again. Morgan, how bad is it? It's all over my underwear and all on my jeans. So I went back to report what I learned to base. My mom goes, well, what'd you do then? We've been through this. And Tammy's sitting there going, assessing, assessing solutions. Rookie end zone, rookie end zone. Sell out 23 year veteran. <laughs> now we're trying to figure out how we're gonna solve this problem because we can't just leave him there. No man gets left behind, you know? <laughs> so, I'm glad y'all like that. <laughs> I just thought that. Ah, I think I'm going to keep that. <laughs> anyway, uh, no, man, like, no man gets left behind. And so, my mom finally looks up and she goes, Bryce, where's your jacket? What jacket? Your kiss jacket. I don't know nothing about no kiss jacket. A jacket with my favorite man on the front, no, I don't know nothing about that. See, look, I'm not even wearing a jacket now. I'm cold right now. See, boo -boo. Bryce, it's in the car. Go get your kiss jacket. Fine. I go out there and get the jacket, come back in. And I think I see where she's going with this. But she tells me the plan anyway. She says, tell him to throw his underwear in the trash and just tie the jacket around his waist to cover the stain on his pants. Okay. Cool. I can do that. So I go back into the bathroom and I text out the instructions on my phone so he can read them. Slide him, underneath, slide him underneath, he said, read that. I said, does that make sense? He said, yes. Toss the jacket over the top of the stall. He slid my phone back to me, and I returned to base. It is in his hands now. And he's taking a minute. It's a waiting game at this point. We're sitting there, we're all getting a little nervous. You know? My mom goes, did he understand his instructions? I said, he told me he did. I don't know, long about that time I see him walking across the pizza restaurant ever so gingerly. <laughs> he gets a little closer, he's got one arm stuck out. And just walking like that. And then I notice he is carrying his jeans! He's carrying his jeans! The jacket is not tied around his waist. The jacket is zipped, wrapped around, and zipped in the front like a kilt. <laughs> She must be thinking, Bryce, that's not very stable. How did he walk all the way across the pizza restaurant like that? And you're right, it's not. It would fall and leave him out in front of God and everybody. We don't want that. But luckily, he's a bigger guy like I am. So he's got it kind of tucked under his belly and presses it down just like that. And then in the back, he just kind of stuck his butt out just like this and let gravity do the rest of the work. He looked like some kind of crazy Scottish goblin, to be honest with you. Hey! Look at that sound back in my bridge! It's a nice new pair of jeans! I reckon that skin mark will come out to me great, don't you think? My name is Bryce Moore, and I'll thank you so very much. God bless you! Oh,